In the huge Atlantic harbor of Saint Nazaire, a gear crew is looking forward to an unusual job. The loading of a fully mounted air-cooled condenser plant bound for a project in Africa. Under normal circumstances, the air-cooled condenser bundles are shipped individually and then mounted at their final destination. However, for this project, the customer insists on the shortest on-site installation time possible. This means shipping everything in pre-assembled modules. And thus, a normal air-cooled condenser becomes a giant and the resultant challenges also become huge. Nicola Bilbao has been selected to solve this demanding problem. His first challenge was to find a ship that was capable of handling this unusual task. The Kang Shenku is one of the few semi-submersible ocean cargo vessels in the world. But before loading can begin, the Kang Shenku has to win an uneven race. It has to beat the MSC Fantasia, the biggest cruise ship in Europe, to the harbour. The Kang Shenku can only enter the harbour at high tide, leaving a time window of just one hour. If we miss the high tide, uh, this ship is due to leave at a certain time, as the passengers will board on this ship today. And if we miss the high tide, this ship will go occupy the dry dock for three days, and then our ship is will have to remain on the harbour and outside the harbour for three days and then we're missing the dates to ship our equipment. The port authorities are aware of the problem. They are doing everything they can to enable the Kang Shenku to arrive on time and send a pilot boat to guide it into the harbour. Permanent contact between the captain and the port authorities will make the race easier for the Kang Shenku, which is a green dot on the radar screen, slowly but surely making its way to Saint Nazaire. Located 80 kilometers away in nearby Nantes, Gear BTT is home to the manufacturing know-how which has been used for the production of the air-cooled condensers. Here, the air-cooled condensers, which are destined for the international oil and gas markets, are manufactured by a highly efficient team with global project experience in industrial air cooling. The principle of industrial air cooling was developed by the founders of Gear in 1920 and has since become an industry standard. This plant is part of the global manufacturing network of the GEA Group. We can manage very large projects, not only here at PTT Nantes, but also globally in our network, manufacturing network in Europe and in uh, other countries. And for instance, we are manufacturing headers at Nantes that we dispatch in other global manufacturing activities. This engineering know-how has turned GEA into a world market leader in industrial air cooling. Production is carried out according to the rigid standards of the oil and gas industry. Precision welding, keeping to narrow tolerances, as well as punctual delivery are all taken for granted. During the design phase, many factors have to be taken into account, such as the exact location, the on-site weather conditions, and any special requirements. These are then incorporated into the production. The result is a reliable cooling installation that can both withstand the site conditions as well as meeting the customer's expectations. And this is where the idea to ship the condensers as modules was conceived. It's a very good idea when, when erecting these ACCs before shipping because, of course, you allow your client to reduce as much as possible the time of erection on site and you optimize by the same way the erection schedule on site by having all the information and all the goods assembled together before leaving. Months ago, the individual parts were brought to the harbour of Saint Nazaire and assembled into giant ACCs.
The experienced harbor pilot assists the captain of the Kangsheng Ku, who has traveled thousands of miles just to arrive at the harbor on time. From now on, every minute counts. The radio message that the MSC Fantasia is getting ready to move into the dock increases the pressure on the crew of the Kangsheng Ku. At the last possible moment, the Kangsheng Ku arrives at the harbor. The race is won. And while the Kangsheng Ku finally enters the harbor, the dock is freed up for the Fantasia. Well, after all, it's been very narrow, but we made it. Hardly has the KSK arrived at the quay, and the plan becomes reality. Now the work begins to prepare the Kangsheng Ku to transport its giant cargo. The entire deck must be cleared so as to make room for the giant ACCs. The ship is cleared and special fastening plates are put onto the Kangsheng Ku. The crew needs several days for this. And another problem had to be solved. The harbour basin is not deep enough to submerge the Kangsheng Ku on the level of the quay. The more difficult step is to load the ship. And uh, we're still expecting the, the big barge, Dino 2, to arrive tomorrow. And next step will be started using the barge to transfer the goods to the ship. Finally, the barge is there. Two pilot boats guided to its destination. The gear engineers and the crew of the Kangsheng Ku are eagerly awaiting its arrival. Only when the special barge is in place can the loading begin. Water can be filled into or discharged from the barge so that it is either on the same level as the key or as the Kangsheng Ku. In other words, the barge will act as a kind of elevator to lift the 47-metre-long, 17-metre-high and 14-metre-wide modules, which each weigh about 500 metric tonnes. The barge has to bridge the gap between the freighter and the key. This means it will be doubly difficult to balance the tremendous weight transfer. Well, you can see on our right side the three big modules uh, uh, that will be shipped uh, using this big barge on the left, uh, which has come over to the port, especially for this operation. So one by one, they'll be loaded on this barge, and this barge will then uh, sail against the big ship, and then the module one by one will be transferred from the barge to the ship. Every welding seam is checked by the insurance inspector, Rafael Nunes, who has many years' experience in dealing with heavy loads. Rafael has been specially flown in from the US for this job. Here, security counts. The freight, which is worth millions, may not sink at sea. This event, which has been planned right down to the last detail, is also a premiere for the specialists of gear. Once loading starts, the crew will only have one thing on their minds, following their instructions to the letter. The loading, which is scheduled to last seven days, will not leave any time for breaks. First of all, the auxiliary units should be loaded, an initial test for the ACCs. The barge and the KSK are brought level to each other to form a bridge to the quay so that the auxiliary unit can be transported across. Meanwhile, preparations are made for the first air-cooled condenser. Carriages that can move the enormous weight now have to replace the supports.
After the careful assembly, part one of the journey begins. The team can only work as long as the light lasts. Safety first. After only a few meters, the team reaches their initial goal. They stop just before the barge as the light is not sufficient for the difficult transfer. The next morning, fog. Under the most difficult of conditions, the men decide to continue as planned, and the Colossus continues its journey towards the waiting Kang Sheng Ku. Yet, despite the maneuverability of the carriages, their radius is too big. The process has to stop again. On the barge, the crew has to remove several obstructing items before loading can continue. Done. Now the air-cooled condenser has to take its second step on to the Kang Sheng Ku. Finally, the heavy condenser can, with the aid of the special carriages, be lifted onto the Dino 2 and Kang Sheng Ku, which are standing level to each other. This operation moves forward at a snail's pace, centimeter by centimeter. Finally, no more obstacles stand in the way. Once it's arrived at its destination, the professional loading crew position it with millimeter accuracy. Immediately, the specialists start to weld it to the ship. Enough for the day. However, there are two more ACCs waiting to be loaded. Also, during the next three days, there is lifting, moving, welding going on from early in the morning until late in the evening. When loading the giants, every centimeter counts. At the end, fog and cold weather have no chance against the experienced gear crew. All three ACCs are on board and the Kang Sheng Ku is waiting with its heavy load to leave the harbour. After the cargo is on board, the men can finally be proud of their extraordinary achievement. The vessel Kang Shenku is just gone. Uh, we've been working seven days uh, loading the equipments. Uh, we're very happy for the very first time we do this kind of work with Gear BTT, and uh, everything went very well. While the Kang Shenku slowly gathers speed and glides off into the Atlantic, the international gear crew is happy and contented. Boarding completed.